it seems that the Alien franchise just might be poised to enter a renaissance as new creatives are attempting film and TV projects that reportedly are aiming to recreate elements that made the original Alien movies so iconic. In addition to Noah Hawley's Alien series for FX that is reportedly attempting to stay truer to the lore and retrofuturism established in the first Alien films, a new movie by director Fede Alvarez, set to debut this year, is also looking to return to the intense claustrophobic storytelling and filmmaking techniques of the past. These efforts to return to the franchise's roots have reignited the excitement of some longtime fans of the franchise. In a previous video, I've discussed the details of Noah Hawley's series, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. However, in this video, I'd like to break down all we know about the upcoming film, Alien Romulus, and how the production is relying on the power of practical effects to authentically recreate the look and feel of the original film. In 2019, a new standalone Alien film was announced that would later be titled Alien Romulus. To celebrate Alien Day in 2023, director and writer Fede Alvarez, whose previous horror credits include Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, teased the newest production that recently began filming by posting an image of a face hugger clutching a production clapper that read, Happy Alien Day. The set background teased a spaceship setting reminiscent of the Nostromo from the original Alien film. By posting this image showcasing a real facehugger prop, director Alvarez was already hinting at his intention to stick more closely to the franchise's roots when it comes to the use of practical effects in creature creation and his aim to be faithful to the unique retrofuturistic style and designs of the Wayland yutani company Tech. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, the filmmaker said, quote, I knew that I wanted to go back to the roots, to the era of the first film, and so that indicates much of the design right away. This company makes a certain type of hallway, a certain type of monitor, a certain type of engine, and if you live in this universe, you'll re-encounter a lot of these designs. So production designer Naaman Marshall and I took a lot of care to make sure we were super faithful to the style of the first film. This takes place a few years later, but in the world of Alien, that's not too much later, really. Alien Romulus has been called an interquel as it takes place between Ridley Scott's Alien and James Cameron's sequel, Aliens. Though it is a standalone story, the director has maintained that his film is still very much connected to the franchise as a whole, in terms of the visual aesthetic and filmmaking techniques of the original. In Entertainment Weekly's summer preview, it was revealed how important it was to get the details right. In one image, the film's lead, Kaylee Spaney, who plays Rain Carradine, is depicted wielding a gun that is meant to look like a blend of the flamethrower Ripley used in Alien and the pulse rifle from Aliens. This attention to detail was also applied to the Xenomorph's design, with a significant emphasis on the use of practical effects. Alvarez wanted to get the best design team possible when it came to creature creation and puppetry, and so he sought out the same group who worked on Aliens, the Stan Winston team. Alvarez was quoted saying, We've got puppeteering, animatronics, all the old school techniques. We had the right guys because they worked on the originals. So for some creatures, we needed those guys to nail the look and make them exactly as you've seen them in the past. But then, when we needed something new, we had those guys as well, so that we made sure we're faithful to the spirit of the original movies. The filmmaker's priority to enlist the help of those who made the original Xenomorphs so frightening and so iconic is a major win. To celebrate Alien Day on April 26 of 2024, Alvarez again commemorated the occasion by releasing a video showing off a practical facehugger in action as it moves around the set. The caption for the post read, Playing with my favorite toy on set of Alien Romulus last summer. RC facehugger created by the amazing team from Weta Workshop. Happy Alien Day, everybody! To have Weta Workshop involved in this production is another major point in the film's favor, as the quality of their craftsmanship continues to stand the test of time. For a production to have real sets and practical creatures for the actors to react to also adds authenticity to their performance. In her interview with EW, Kaylee Spaney commented about how frightened she was in a scene with the practically made Xenomorph, saying, 
I remember we did one specific take of a scene where I'm with the Xenomorph and director Fede Alvarez kept it rolling for about, oh god, it felt like half an hour, but it was probably only 10 minutes. It was just pure terror for 10 minutes straight, with the Xenomorph right there. Fede was great at throwing in little surprises like that and catching us actors off guard. While CGI is certainly a wonderful tool to help filmmakers bring fantastic and otherworldly imagery to life, in recent years it has been incredibly overused. The use of CGI has ballooned to such a degree that it has now become commonplace for studios to boast about a production's reliance on practical effects wherever possible. Given the myriad of tools available to filmmakers these days, the rare ability to use them all in a wise and effective manner certainly speaks to any given director's experience, vision, and creativity. Alvarez spoke about how he was attempting to balance CGI with practical effects, saying, I have this obsession with no green screens, so we built every creature and set. Everything had to be built so we were really living and breathing in these spaces. I come from a background where I know how to build the effects myself. I still do VFX shots in my movies to this day. I'll cut and do VFX shots on my computer sometimes. So it's just whatever is best for the shot, and when it comes to face-to-face -face encounters and moments with creatures, nothing beats the real thing. For the sets, we built spaceships and we built miniatures. We went back to all of that and then we figured out ways to marry it with the CG world. There's some things that only CG can do for the scope and movement, so it really has to be the right tool for the shot. Ideally, you should never feel like you're watching CG. The director's seemingly balanced view is absolutely admirable. It's encouraging to see that Alvarez not only has a passion for this franchise as a whole, but also for the filmmaking techniques used to originally bring this universe and its horrifying creatures to life. Alvarez also had the benefit of collaborating with Ridley Scott, who was involved in the production as lead producer, as well as the input from James Cameron in the early stages of the scriptwriting process. The director noted that Scott had watched Romulus at the point when there was no VFX done on the film, and subsequently stated that you can watch it without VFX and still know exactly what's going on. For many, this return to the old-school methods of crafting practical sets and creatures is a refreshing approach and one that hopefully is becoming more widespread. When it comes to the sci-fi horror genre, the power of practical sets, effects, and creature design is undeniable. It evokes real, visceral reactions from the actors and effectively immerses the audience into this bizarre, cold, and terrifying universe. But I'm curious to know what you think about Alien Romulus and the director's intent to stay true to the practical effects of the franchise's earlier films. Does this return to the old-school look and feel of the universe make you more optimistic about this upcoming film? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.